feeling in the crowd, especially in the in the hardstyle and hardcore scene, it gives off a lot of vibes. I'm vibing with the crowd, so if they feel the bass, I do as well. And the bigger the drop is, the bigger picture I want to do with light. Event. It's an intimate setting. The, the venue is big, but it's not as big as most hardcore shows in, in the Netherlands. I'm quite close to the crowd as well. And what I always try to go for is creating wow moments for the crowd. I'm Phil, I'm 29 years old. I started in the industry as a stagehand when I was 18. Back then I gained a lot of interest in this profession. As a stagehand I did a lot of touring shows. I helped set it up as local crew in Vienna in the Stadthalle. I did Bon Jovi, Madonna, Justin Bieber, Justin Timberlake, everything that is pretty big. So after a few years as a stagehand, I decided to actually learn the job as an apprentice in the Design Center Linz. I did that for two years and after that I decided school is not really my thing and I moved to the Netherlands and tried out my luck there. So after working for quite a while in the industry, I went to Climax 2015 in the Netherlands and I was amazed by the production of it, the light show, laser, stage design, just everything. And in my head, I started with the thought of thinking about moving to the Netherlands. Half a year later, I did that move. So as soon as I moved to the Netherlands, I got pretty lucky and started as a rigger for a rigging company that does a lot of motion and also works with Q-Dance. I did DEF CON in the first year and I was amazed by the production of it. I knew that it is my dream to one day become a light operator and do big shows like that. So therefore I started with learning how to operate. And I did that all by myself, watching YouTube tutorials, asking a lot of colleagues, light operators, how they are working. I think it helped a lot to see how they work in the Netherlands. The quality of the production in the Netherlands is just, I think in my opinion, it is the best around the world. So I gained a lot of experience in all different uh, departments. I did rigging, I did layer for also two years. I did lights, also a little bit of sound and, and video. For me, just the way how hard style and hardcore shows are set up, it's always more about the show, not always around the artist. It's, it's just a, a, a whole package. You know what the most important part is about being an MC is the interaction with the crowd. And here they always bring A-class energy. If you haven't been here yet, you need to be here. We will be rocking all night long. And I have to say the DJs are excited, the crowd is always hyped, and we're just gonna go mental tonight. They step it up. Like same as the crowd, the promoters are stepping up if you look behind me. Yeah, they just bring the show, like uh, next level stuff. It's not just the artist, it's the show, it's, it's video, it's laser, it's, it's light as well. And the performance of, of artists, of MCs. And 
Also the stage designs in this particular scene is quite huge. There's always a lot of deco involved, especially in the Netherlands. And I really like to see stages with decoration. For example, DEFCON last year was, I think, a 20 meter high warrior, which is just impressive. Actually, I, I wanted to become an operator first. And by that, I tried to just shoot really big and I redrew the stage of Climax 2015 in MA3D, which was a hell to do. But I succeeded within a week and from there I just tried to figure out how to process a show in this scale. So I started to use S-Cut because I knew that all the companies in the Netherlands, they use S-Cut. I already knew how to draw in CAD programs like Visivik and the switch to S-Cut was pretty easy because it's also CAD based and I already had a, a basic understanding of CAD programs so I had a start and from there I kept redrawing uh, existing stages just to get a, a feeling of how the software works. So, so far it was pretty easy to just draw in S-Cut and then send it out to the production companies or the technical companies. They mostly use Vectorworks or Visivik and it's easy convertible. I started with Masters of Hardcore in Austria last year and what I like to try with that is to bring the, the level of the Dutch a bit more to Austria have a stage design that actually uh, gets close to what they build in the Netherlands, which is a bit hard due to budget. We don't have the same capacity of people that uh, they have in the Netherlands. So the festival is in Vienna, in the Markshalle. The biggest challenge in the Markshalle is they don't have a lot of uh, load capacity in the roof. So therefore I have to work with a ground support, which I don't really like because it doesn't really fit into a hardcore uh, show because it, it has like the typical rock show um, element. So I'm trying to work my way around it, maybe implement it a little bit into the design. And for this year's design, I went for um, an angled truss object behind the DJ. So the challenge for this drawing we had was the center object, which you can see here. Originally, it was used with a 90 degree corner, but when you look at it from the crowd perspective the video wall on the bottom some colors are obstructed or can't be seen so you end up with a really broken video which wouldn't look good so we decided with the technical supplier to use a 135 degree corner now we have a bigger angle and there is no loss in quality anymore uh, originally we had the pointies mounted on the truss but the angle we have here now is a bit too big to uh, make nice moving effects so I decided to put them on a pipe and actually place them upwards or downwards which makes it a lot easier when using moving effects. Because hardcore it starts Probably already with 200 BPMs, uh, you need a lot of fast lights and I always go for a really fast moving heads. So I have pointies, I have spikies above the crowd, I have spiders, I have one small moving head which is a Mac Ultra, but I use that for a gobo projection on the roof or on the floor or on the stage. I also have Tetra 2, which are in two lines, one on the bottom and one on the top of the angled truss object. And I also use Atomic Dot Warm to have like a 
those single blinders which are used pretty commonly in hardstyle and hardcore festivals. They also have a strobe channel and they're really fast and I also used the Aura back panel to have like also a little bit of a left par which gives a, 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 another layer in the look and I also have typical blinders. I have eight light blinders and four light blinders just to get a really warm look. What I really like about the venue is the steel beams are not black. They are a little bit brighter so you can also play with lights and shine on them. On the side trusses we have five Mac Ultras, we have ten Spiders and we have four Color Strike M. Above the crowd we have eight times the same truss with LED tiles with two color strikes each for spikies. Spikies are used because they are really fast and they can infinite tilt and infinite pen. So here we have our laser guy. He's responsible for the lasers. He's from the owner of Light Laser Systems. So we're gonna go on stage now and we have a look at what we have on the stage. So last year was my first year doing the design for Masters of Hardcore in Vienna and I decided to bring a catwalk which was used very often by the DJs last year and they really liked it. So this year we're gonna use it again and I brought some sun strips to light up the MC or the DJs whoever is gonna be here. Right now it looks a little bit empty on stage, but tomorrow we're gonna get uh, all the SFX. So over here in our wings, we have a few Cameo W600 SMD. We have sun strips. We also have Atomic Vito Dot Warm and some pointies. So I decided to use the W600 because they're pretty bright and I use them as strobe as well and I can do some nice color flashes like red and blue which I really like and they have a lot of output which is good for this setup. So over here we have 16 Tetra 2 bar in a line. We also have them on top and they will face each other to have a light curtain and also blind the audience. And they have a nice flower effect. So in our main object, we have 48 pointies. We have six lasers. We have a big video wall. Behind the object, we have some eight light blinders that are shining through on the bottom and on top and a line of sun strips. And on the bottom, we have some more W600 SMDs. So the challenge over here for this main object was it's one big piece, so it's all connected together. And together with our German suppliers, they came up with a technical solution to build it and make it possible. And they did a very well job. So what I really like about S-Cut is the way you can customize things. First of all, you can have your own custom library. I made my own one with the existing object from S-Cut. I just copied it to a different folder and uh, adjusted some of those objects. I'm gonna show you a little bit how easy it is in S-Cut to draw a layer. So I made some layer sets that uh, allows me to quickly start with a 2x2x2 two by two by two meter layer box which I can just insert, explode and then I have all the different objects and if I need to draw some uh, layer decks or uh, 
a bigger layer, I can easily do that with some uh, copy commands, which uh, you end up with a bigger uh, layer construction with just a few clicks. The cool thing about that is I can also go upwards just by copy in the C axis and then just click enter and all of a sudden you have a big layer base and once this is finished for now we have a layer standard how the Dutch call it it's ending now with a pen which you don't want so you want to have it without a pen there is an easy way of doing that by just inserting the right one which is a two meter standard without the pen and then selecting all of those that you want to replace and then type in the replace command click the correct one and then all of uh, you basically finished uh, when you're done with the layer you can also make some really nice drawings for this case I'm gonna move to the plots now can import them now for people it's really easy to build it because wherever you see a one it tells you exactly what you need and if you see a two it's a different one and then it tells you also exactly uh, which verticals or standards you need to place which I can show in a different drawing that is a little bit different I have here prepared uh, some of the layer parts from two years ago from Ground Zero. I will show how easy it is to make uh, some plots for people to build it really uh, quick and easy. So for a uh, standard plan, how they call it in S-Cut or verticals, you can just run the command. Now you will end up with a sheet that tells you exactly on which position uh, which standard will be needed and if you go to the plots you can have it like this for number one you have a wood pad a, a spindle a cup a one meter standard without a pen and then later on a cup which is a little bit higher so if we go to number one to so that one you can see it is the wood pad which can be seen now uh, then the one meter standard and then another cup it's sometimes really hard to tell if you uh, have layer parts on the same uh, place twice so for example down here you have two diagonals on the same spot which in 3d it works but not in real life and for this you have a command which checks where you have those things um, placed twice so it will end up with a red arrow and then you can see where the mistakes are made I think that uh, passion plays a big role because it, it is very extreme music because it starts with 200 BPM and can go to 300 and above and I think you really have to uh, like and understand the music to get the best uh, result because obviously you want to have a, a put on a, a good show for the, for the crowd. For these fast BPMs it's not really easy to uh, create a, a light show because most of the moving heads they they can't do 260 bpm so you have to work with a few tricks uh, and and work with dimmer effects and other effects to make it look like it's fast but actually they are moving a little bit slower so my show file is based on a lot of macros which uh, do a lot of things uh, automatically so it's programmed in Granome 2 and I also have my MA2 full size at home which makes it a lot easier to uh, actually pre-program those stages. I'm pretty lazy and a fan of uh, sitting for a whole day creating a macro that saves me 
a lot of clicks and with the show file I can uh, program a show pretty quick. I do many things, I do technical drawings, I operate, I also do rigging, I build layer. That keeps it really uh, interesting for me because every day is different and having a balance of all of these things uh, keeps the job really interesting.